Views expressed by Casters Guild members are only the opinions of that member, and that could change from day to day. Guild members may use mature language, but that in no way means they are mature. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Guild Hall. Grab a drink and have a seat as we discuss the past and future of Season 3, because that's the spell we're casting tonight on Casters Guild. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Casker's Guild. I am your guild master, Rick Perry, and I'm not wearing underwear. And I am your guild master, Baron Kane, and I am wearing Rick's underwear. And now we know where it went. You're right. <laughs> I wanted it to be a surprise. Didn't know you'd notice so fast. <laughs> so tonight, we don't necessarily have a specific topic. We just kind of want to discuss how we think season three is going, what we plan on doing with season three from here on out, and just other things that we feel like we haven't covered. Because we might have a Star Wars episode, and then all of a sudden Kenobi finishes, and we didn't get a chance to discuss it, so here we are. There's our nice little episode where we can talk about uh, Kenobi and all the other things that have come out. Kenobi happened? Oh yeah, it happened. It happened all over my face. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. He, I didn't, I didn't think he was, I didn't think he was like that. But you know, honestly, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and dig into the past. Um, couple things I'd like to address. One, recently on the books that made us geeks episode, I talked about the uh, Vampire Chronicles, and I'd like to make a correction. I stated that the first three books were. Interview with the Vampire, Queen of the Damned, and uh, Memnock the Devil. But that's actually, like, the first five books. Um, in my head, the Vampire Lestat, which is actually the second book, and Queen of the Damned, which is the third book, are, like, one book, which is why I mushed them together. And then Tale of the Body Thief is book four, and Memnock the Devil is book five, and they have similar <clears> themes, <throat> so I kind of mushed them together as well. So, But I stand by, if you're going to read the Vampire Chronicles, you should read Interview with the Vampire, through Memnock the Devil. That's the first five books, not the first three. So uh, there's there's that. And second, also speaking of that episode, I'd like to uh, welcome all our new listeners. Thank you for coming over from Duke and Duchess. Uh, we are happy to have you. I'm, I'm really glad they, uh, they gave them all that money to come and listen to us. Yeah, yeah. The, the fact that they paid them is just above and beyond. That it's we, so, so so generous of them. We don't ask that of any of our guests, and the fact that they no. did that, fantastic. They just, they just kind of offered it. <laughs> so yeah, you guys spend that money well. So we are now halfway through season three. Season two, three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's it's crazy how it feels. How's it, how it's going? This whole crisis thing has gotten my time all messed up. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know. The way you said that just kind of addresses the fact that I think we're going really well. The fact that it doesn't feel like we're halfway through the third season just Mm -mm. shows how good of a time we're having doing this. Absolutely. And and I know we we have really worked on having guests on every single one of our episodes. And I'm really enjoying like the regulars that we've had on. But I, I think... Probably some of the most fun I've had this time around has been like our collaborations that we've done. Yeah. And I know we just, you know, I know I'm not trying to say that, you know, we got a huge spike in listeners because (laughs) I had no clue that was going to happen. I had a lot of fun during all of our collaborations that we've done so far. Yeah, it's it's been fun to record on other people's podcasts, which if you're listening and in case for some reason you don't know. We did do an episode with Operation Silver Screen, so you should go check that out. And we did an episode very recently with the Duke and Duchess Book Club. You should search them both and check it out. They're both good episodes on their podcasts, and they were both on our podcasts. And, like, that was super fun. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It makes me feel like uh, Mr. Peanut Butter from BoJack Horseman just coming in. Is this a crossover episode? (laughs) Yeah, I I really I would really love to do more crossover episodes over that out there. So you know if you're if you're listening and you know you 
we know you or, you know, or even if we don't know you, feel free to approach us if you want to do a collab or something like that. And, um, you know, we maybe we could work something out. It doesn't necessarily even have to be that you have a podcast. Like, you could have a YouTube channel and we'll come do a video with you. You come do a podcast with us. Or you have a TikTok and we come do a couple TikToks with you. You come do a podcast with us. You know, whatever works. So, yeah. So, you know, if you're out there listening, uh, Dominic Monan, <laughs> feel free to give us a call. I know you have a podcast. Uh, you're trying to get it up and going right now. You need some clout. You know, we'll we'll hop in there. <laughs> bring that caster's guild cred yeah you know yeah. the real lends some credibility to what yeah you're i mean that's, do. Mm-hmm. yeah that's what that's what we could do <laughs> you know and if he doesn't call us billy boyd you can call us too that's fine mm-hmm. ear biscuits you know if you're trying to have us on let us mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. you know we'll be there right right, right. new rock stars you mm-hmm. know you you know talk about marvel once or twice you we've seen marvel movies we can do this <laughs> Oh, speaking of which, a couple new things came out since we did our Marvel episode. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give the normal spoiler warning. We, you know, I think that Thor Love and Thunder has been out long enough that we can probably talk about this. But still, spoiler warning, if you don't want to hear anything about Thor Love and Thunder, maybe back out now. Mm -hmm. Or, you know or Multiverse of Madness, or any of these things that we're about to talk about. Miss Marvel just ended. Anyways, yeah, just just back out now. We're going to talk about it. Love and Thunder. Um, I loved it. Yes, absolutely. It was There's, so much fun. And it's so... You know what? We talked about this before. It's We've talked about this before. You, you're allowed to not like something. Mm-hmm. I'm never, ever... If you don't like something, that's fine. But... For people to be coming out and spewing their fucking vile vomit all over this movie. Is that happening? I haven't heard any controversy on this Oh, one. yeah. Oh, God. Oh, it's, not even nece- it's not even necessarily just controversy. Uh, there's a lot of people that are coming out and just just spewing their bullshit about, oh, you know, Taika Waititi is just making all the characters dumb. And it's like, okay, but it's funny. Yeah. And it's kind of... It's it's still like a good story. Yeah. And it's still there's some, you know, emotion there and some action. It's like, OK, so he's a little higher on the comedy than anybody else. And I don't just because you have a critique doesn't mean you can't like the movie. Like, I'll agree. I think that that he kind of did make all of the characters kind of dumb. But that doesn't mean I didn't like it. Like, that is something I didn't like about the movie, but that doesn't mean I don't like the movie overall. I still had fun hey, watching it. Right, exactly. It's 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 like I can I can see I can see someone saying like you know eh, I, I didn't like it. The one for me. Yep. Or you, they could even go so far as like mm, I really didn't like it. I kind of hated it. Cool. That's I mean it's cool. And then when they kind of offer their opinion, like when someone when someone says, well, why didn't you like it? Sure, you know, give me that rundown. Tell me everything you hated about it. But it seems like when people, and I'm sure people would have been like this back in the 70s if they had the internet and shit like that. Mm-hmm. The internet kind of makes this possible. Right. But when people get on there and they just seem to be running a full campaign over what, about hating this movie and doing whatever they can to bash it, it's like... That's a little excessive. It is very excessive because it's like, I get that you don't like it, but you know what? I guarantee you people did. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hated, I just hated Twilight. Yeah. But I'm not going, I'm not going out of my way to bash that movie. No. But you know why? Because some of my best friends love that movie. Mm-hmm. So you know what? Ha, huh, here's a perfect example. I bet a lot of people don't know this about me, but I hated, hated Repo the Genetic Opera. I knew this was coming fucking hated it Mm -hmm. you know why you never heard about that because i love it when people love what they love sure there's nothing wrong with that movie there's nothing essentially problematic about that movie Mm -hmm. as far as i know i don't think so i just didn't like it Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna fucking go on a smear campaign on this movie no i might share my opinion 
maybe once if I don't like something. Right, um, right, And right. just be like, eh, this wasn't for me. Now, on this podcast, I've been known to go on a few rants. I think they've all been deserved. But that's the thing about opinion, man. It's Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, and most of them stink. But, you know, it, it, there is there is a line where, like, don't make your entire personality the fact that you hate a thing. Right, yeah. It's like... It's like if I'm if I'm looking at your social media posts and everything is about how you hated this and how you hated this, I know you liked some things. Why don't you post about what you like? Mm -hmm. Why why do you have to be Nancy negative about everything? And, and, and again, it's and I and you know what? I kind of answered the question for myself. It's because they want attention, whatever kind of attention they can get. And if they watch something and they didn't like it. And they want to listen to their mom's advice and keep it to themselves because they don't have anything nice to say. They're going to say everything bad about it just so they can still get attention over it. Negativity also does tend to get more attention on the Internet than positivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. So, you know what? I get it. I see you guys. Uh, if you want attention, I'll give you attention. Just, you know, keep your fucking mouth shut and <laughs> I'll come and give you attention. You know, I'll rub your belly. I'll give, I'll give you some crackers. But, actually, speaking of Thor Love and Thunder, my favorite characters in Thor Love and Thunder were definitely the goats. Oh, those fucking goats. <laughs> who, by the way, who, by the way, are actually derived from mythology. Yeah. I thought that was so cool when, like, they gave them the goats. And I was like, oh, that's so neat. <laughs> and the fact that Korg said, I think it was Korg, said that they could eat the goats... Uh huh. Again, straight out of mythology. Yep. I don't know if anybody knows this, but Teeth Nasher and Teeth Grinder mm -hmm. are you can <laughs> Thor could eat them, and as long as he saved every piece of the goat and wrapped them up in in their hides, the next day they would come back to life. <laughs> so no wonder those fuckers are screaming all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm I'm going to say I I think that they could they they approached a wholly depressing storyline. Yeah. I mean this th there was nothing I mean both of they approached two storylines. I don't think that the Jane Foster uh Mighty Thor fought Gore the God Butcher. I don't think. Okay. In the comics. Anyways, but the Gore the God Butcher storyline and the Jane Foster storyline and for them to for them to put it in the movie that way, I, I appreciate because I'm not I don't want to sit through a movie where I'm going to be depressed at the end of it. Yeah, this easily with the storylines that they chose, this easily could have been a Thor of the Dark World. And, oh, yeah. And they didn't go this that is, way. Yeah, exactly. And then a lot of the things that people were bitching about not being in the movie, such as Gore the God Butcher, not butchering gods get it but i guarantee you the like and everybody wants to come down on taika watiti mm -hmm. why because he's a wonderful man and he's on the way up so people want to try to tear him down get it but i guarantee you they weren't in the movie because the studio stepped in and yeah. they're like no uh, we don't want tons of scenes of just people dying i feel like if they want to maintain that PG-13 rating, which obviously they do. Having the deaths happen off screen was probably the best way to do it because that leaves the the butchering of the gods up to the audience's imagination. And that's the only way for it to be as brutal as it was is in your imagination because there's no way they could show that brutality on screen and have it still be PG-13. Yeah. I mean, it's like you even saw a snippet of like one of the scenes where you have like multiple gods just hanging from hooks. Mm -hmm. Is that what you wanted? Is that you wanted that scene? I, I mean, I did too, but <laughs> I also knew it wasn't going to be in there because I'm not an idiot. Right. Yeah. It actually happened when we went to the theater to see the movie, uh, my wife looked up at the chart and was like, oh, it's PG-13? And I was like, of course it is. It's a Marvel movie. Right. Like, it's... We're... They don't do not... R. I mean, I, they could. They will they be. Will. They will, yeah, they will they be will. doing R, but 
but I think that they're saving the R for Deadpool, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool that they're doing that. Thor, er, or and Thor, and none of the Avengers characters will ever be R. No, now, all the main yeah. characters they're gonna stay PG thirteen. They wanted to have the largest audience appeal possible, right? Characters like Deadpool, they know the selling point of Deadpool is the fact that he's R, but they're going to save that for him, and then the younger kids, they just don't go see Deadpool. They get more adult audiences to see Deadpool. Yeah. I also kid, think that's going kid. to lead to dead characters like Deadpool that get the R rating. I think that's going to mm -hmm. lead to them being less tied in, like to where you don't sadly, have sadly. to see Deadpool in order to see the mainline Avengers stuff. Right, right. Give and take. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do I think that Deadpool might make an appearance in, you know, like a movie like Doctor Strange or something like that? Maybe. Sure. He yeah. might. But he's not going to be like a main character. There's nothing that's going to happen in the Deadpool movie that's going to affect the story of the Avengers. Exactly. And people are going to have to get on board with that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That's how money works, people. Yep. I, I wish we didn't live in a capitalist society, but guess what? If we didn't, we wouldn't be getting these movies. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> 100%. I don't, know, I don't know if I'm sorry about that, personally. I think I like the fact that they're doing that because oh, very I soon... Mean, I was obviously sarcastic with that. Sorry. <laughs> but even though... what it, like it's, I like the fact that they're doing that. Whether it be for money or whatever reason that they're doing it, because... Yeah. I have a daughter who's coming up on the age where very soon I'll be able to start showing her the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely not going to show her Deadpool, at least not yet. And the fact that she won't need to see Deadpool to understand what's going on as a parent, I like. And I know that as a parent, that's what Marvel is appealing to by doing that or will be appealing to by doing that is the yep. appealing to the parents who don't want their kids to go see Deadpool. Yeah, like when my kid first, when Deadpool first came out, I didn't take my kid to see Deadpool. I wasn't ready for that. You know, she got a little older. I mean, not much older, mind you. Mm -hmm. she, she got a little older. I realized that fuck was her favorite word to hear. <laughs> to hear. She doesn't go around just saying it. Sure. Fuck, is, fuck was her favorite word to hear. And believe it or not, someday she was going to have boobies. So guess what? I think we're completely fine taking her to go see that. Sure. It definitely depends on the kid. I used you, to tell yeah, people that all the time when I worked obviously. at popular video game chain store chain. Um, I used to tell that pe to people all the time when they come up and be mm -hmm. like, is this video game appropriate for my kid? I don't know. I don't know your kid. Um, I like, would tell you know them what? what's in the video game and be like, now you make yep. a choice. But like, I don't know your kid. Same, same deal. I used to work at popular video store that sold blockbuster movies. Um, you know, people would do the same thing. It's like, hey, is it, you know, I know this is rated R, but is this good for my kid? Or even just pick up the movie. Is this good for my kid? Well, it's rated R, so that's really up to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to rent it to the child if they come in here, but if you want to get it and show it to your kid, that's that's on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would tell them what it was about. You know, say, hey, the, you know, there's some sexual situations, there's some violence, but, you know, if you think your kid's ready for that, go for it. I think movie rating systems, when titling their ratings, were a whole lot smarter in that regard than video games. Because video mm -hmm. games straight up give you, like, it's ages. It's T for teen. It's M for mature. Yeah. Um, whereas movies, it's PG is parental guidance. Like, as a parent, it is your guidance to decide whether they see it or not. Same thing with PG-13. Parental mm -hmm. guidance. And then R is just, it's restricted. That's R. It just means that, like, the theater is going to restrict your child from seeing it. But right. if you think your kid's ready, go for it. Yeah, I feel I feel like when they came out, I feel like uh, video rentals, like uh, DVDs and VHS and everything like that, probably should have had a different kind of rating system. Because obviously it's like, you know, R for restricted. What, they can't come into the movie? What's that even mean? Right. Maybe just switch up your... Well, I think this. The, I think it could, in that case, could just mean the sale or the rental is restricted. Yeah, I mean that's you know, obviously what how yeah. people took it, mm -hmm. and you know, and there are age ranges where it's like mm -hmm. you know a rated R is seventeen and above, you can get it. Uh, you know, PG thirteen, 
But even then, it's like, it's not necessarily, oh, this is restricted. It's like, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if a 13 year old came in with a P or a 12 year old came in with a PG 13 movie and their parent was with them, sure, I'd rent it to them. Mm -hmm. They're being guided by their chair, by their parent. Exactly. I think, but I think the reason my wife was uh, disappointed by the fact that Thor wasn't R was the fact that she didn't get as much Thor nudity as she thought she might based on that trailer. That's that's fair. We there was a we 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 did miss um a little Mjolnir there. Mhm. No full frontal and a full and on hammerhead. <laughs> yeah. But Funko is definitely feeding my pop addiction cuz they already released a pre-order for a pop that is the two goats pulling the ship. <laughs> that's great. I already pre-ordered it. That's, that's great. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I just don't. I just don't get it. I mean, there, there's obviously a whole other backlash of hate that is coming out because of Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, you know, you got the your regulars who, you know, are talking about how comics are too woke and blah blah blah, and it's like, okay, sure, I I I get what you're saying and you're wrong, but I can at least put you in your corner over there. Mm -hmm. But then you get those people who are just thinking that, but not saying it, mm -hmm. and blasting the movie for a bunch of other stupid shit. Right. But then you also have your 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 little gatekeepers who are sad because the movie or the show is different than the comic because she doesn't have the same power set or because of... You know, certain parts of the story are different, and it's like you realize that there is a continuity with the whole world, right? Yeah, it, a whole world that they've changed already. It's going to get further and further and further away from the comics. The more and movies you know what? we have until they do a reset, which at some point in time, it's gonna happen. But yeah. you know, oh, yeah. until they do a reset, the the more shows and the more movies they make, the further it's gonna get from their comic mm -hmm. origin because like it's yep. gotta fit within the rules that they have established for the MCU. Yep. And and again, back to Thor Love and Thunder, perfect example. The uh, new character at the end of Thor Love and Thunder. Mm -hmm. Not in the comics at all. Nope. Well, I mean, I guess Korg isn't either. Yeah, but, but that's just Taika be, being Taika. Right. <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 the character in the very end, she's not in the comics. Gore did, Gore's daughter died. Yep. Did not come back, mm -mm. even though there are a bunch of fun theories about her coming back, mm -hmm. about who she really is and stuff like that. So sure, well, that I think that's the cool part about it, right? That's the cool part about it not sticking to the comics is all of a sudden all the fans can have their theories and their speculation because if we knew exactly who she was, then there it is. That's exactly who she is. But now we can all have fun speculating and yeah and theorizing and then two I, movies from now we can all find out we're wrong i wonder if that's the real motivation behind people losing their shit because it's different because they read the comics so they know what's happening so they feel like they're on a level above the people who are just now getting into mcu mm. or the Mar marvel universe because of the the movies but now all of a sudden they're on the same footing and they gotta cry about it all of a sudden all their friends who are like there was a time all their friends watching these movies, oh, who's that? Who's that? What's this mean? What's going on? And they could like just spout their knowledge and be like, oh, that's so-and-so. Oh, this is going to happen. This is what they're all about. And now this is one of the first times their friends went, who's that? And they went, uh... Er? Some stupid character that they made, made because they're trying to be woke and... Uh, uh, uh. That was them dying at the end. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. I like the direction it's going. Me too. Um, also, it sets up another Young Avenger, possibly. Um, yeah. You know. You, which... you know what? I love the Young Avengers. Keep them coming. Mm -hmm. Make up new ones. I don't care. Yeah. You know what? Let them take over the MCU. Mm -hmm. Make all the other characters die. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Get get seventeen Young Avengers that have never existed before and bring them all in. I don't care. Yeah. I'm watching something to have a story told to me, not because I know exactly what's going I don't want the same story told to me twice. I will say a different story. if you're going to bring in 17 brand new young Avengers and have them take over, do it the way you're doing it now. 
mm-hmm. where th- the old characters are having stories that are introducing the new characters. Don't just like make a young Avengers movie tomorrow with 17 new characters that I don't care about. But if you're going to do it like this, yeah, I'm on board for that. Absolutely. I do hope, because thinking about young event, the young Avengers and how they started, I, I really hope that they still bring Billy and Tommy in. They, they missed a good chance to kind of bring them in. I, now I, I enjoy the characters. Obviously their story's different. I'm fine mm-hmm. with that. I really, 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 really hope that love isn't going to like take Wiccan's place. Okay. I hope love is her own character and she does her thing. I don't want her being a placeholder for Wiccan, especially when he already exists in the world. No, I think I'm hoping love just takes Thor's spot, honestly. In well, the, in the Young see, Avengers, just. But see, that's that's the funny thing is Wiccan is the one that took Thor's spot in the Young Avengers. Oh, is it? OK, well, he was he was originally the Asgardian. Gotcha. Or wait. Yeah. This just goes to show my lack of comic book knowledge. Yeah, I think he was. I think he was the Asgardian. So did he like pick up Mjolnir at some point or something like that? No, 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 no. OK, so here's the deal. Here's the deal with um with Billy. OK, so the original the original names of the. Um, what are they called? The Young Avengers. There you go. So you had, I believe it was the Asgardians. Or the, I, I believe he, he was the Asgardian. Okay. God, I could be, I, I mean, I'm saying it out loud and it doesn't sound right. Anyways, but he had like a stick and, you know, he had like the winged helmet, but they were really making it seem like he was Thor's son, mm-hmm. but he wasn't. Right. But they were playing it off like that, just like. Hulkling. He okay. was the little Hulk. You didn't see that he had his shape-shifting abilities or anything like that. He was just a big green guy that was coming in and punching things. Mm-hmm. Then you had the Patriot, I believe is what his character's name was. Now, he was the closest one in origin, but they were definitely making it seem like, you know, he was another kind of super soldier kind of thing. Sure. Oh, well, and I think when it comes to the Young Avengers, like I think all of them are changing for MCU. I don't oh. think anything's going to oh, yeah. be the same from that. No, no, no. The Young Avengers are definitely going to be different because we're definitely not going to get an Iron Lad or or Young Vision. I can't remember how he started, but I think it was Iron Lad. I do we're think definitely we're going to not... get an Iron Heart, though. Oh, people are already shitting all over her. I know, but they showed They showed promotional art of Iron Heart, and, and they're just, like, bashing the suit. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I remember the comics. She had her suit looked really like real like Tony Stark could have given her that suit. Mm-hmm. And it's like we that's not I want I don't want to say that's not realistic because, you know, we're talking about a world of gods and, mm-hmm. you know, all this stuff. But I I don't want I don't want this character to be like, oh, I'm getting a handout from Tony Stark, which is kind of what it seemed like in the comics. Right. I want her. In her own garage, with a box of scraps, making her own suit. Mm-hmm. I want her using her intelligence and making the it's like I I that's another thing I'm tired of is like these movies that just shit on their the the intelligence of their characters, like the original Spider Man. Mm-hmm. You know, like I may be misquoting, but I'm pretty sure that they gave him those organic webbing shooters Mm -hmm. because they didn't see how a teenager would be capable of making those web shooters Mm. it's like i don't track what you're saying right now yeah it's like again you're we're talking about realism at this point could they yeah Mm -hmm. In, in a world of marvels why couldn't a teenager make something as simple as web shooters heck in our world i mean like Google some stuff and look at some stuff that the teenagers are accomplishing. That's I mean, true. it's That's crazy. True. It's crazy. Now, you know, no one's going to, no one's going to make in this world, web shooters that have the tensile strength to swing you from building to building and disintegrate after no. a certain amount no, of time. Probably that, not. that, that technology is well out of realism, mm-hmm. but again, in a world of marvels, mm-hmm. why not? So, I could see if if maybe like the one thing they do for Ironheart is like maybe she finds an old arc reactor or something like that. And maybe that's what inspires her to put the scrap together or something like that. Well, I mean, I I think it's a common it's a common thing, too, that 
these suits of armor don't work without some power source like the arc reactor. Mm -hmm. And the arc reactor is still essentially a protected intellectual property in the world of Marvel, I'm sure. I'm sure Stark Industries owns that intellectual property. What would be really cool if she got her hands on the old arc reactor that says proof Tony Stark has a heart and that's where she pulls the iron heart name from is she sees he, the heart it, on that arc reactor. And he threw that in the water, didn't he? I think so. It's like I I, I can't remember. I don't know if he threw that in the water in at the end of 3. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. No, wait. Yes, he did he Fuck it, whatever. Yes, that's that would be perfect. You know what? I don't care if it was in the house that the fake iron monger or blew up or uh, not, Mandarin. Not, not Mandarin. Fake Mandarin. Fake Mandarin. That's fake what I Mandarin, meant. Yeah. I don't care if it was in the house that the fake Mandarin blew up and like it ended up in rubble and then Ironheart's uncle was part of the cleanup crew. Like I don't I don't care. But you know. Yep. And, and I do think that if the, I don't know, I haven't read anything about where they're going with this, but I think that Riri Williams should also be involved in one of those out the Wakandan outreach. Oh, that'd things. be cool. You know what I mean? The things that yeah. uh, Shuri has set up in the end. The outreach programs. Yeah. I think that that, that should be something just, just a call back. It's another connection. Of, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Well, especially since it's happening in Wakanda forever. Yeah. So, because, yeah, she's making an appearance at least in Wakanda forever. So, I think that that is the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah. They've got a lot of fucking stuff going on in Wakanda forever. <laughs> They've got a lot of stuff going on. I mean, the not the least of which is Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, mm -hmm. um, not being in it. And them having to deal with his death. Yeah. That that had to have been hard on everybody. But then you take that into account in the story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, y there's already been leaks and everything like that about how, you know, the T'Challa is actually dying. Mm -hmm. Or he is dead when the thing starts out. So, oh, and then Namor is going to be in it, too. It, this so much. There's so much. I'm afraid <laughs> of how this is all going to play out. All right, hold on. Before this becomes an entirely Marvel episode, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll mention Miss Marvel real quick. I have to say, I haven't finished it yet. I've watched mm -hmm. like half of it, I think, or I'm only mm -hmm. like, I think I'm only like two episodes left. I just got caught up between Umbrella Academy and Stranger Things. and then, Oh, Umbrella Academy. And then oh. garbage television that I watch. And then, you know, that's I haven't finished Miss Marvel yet. But what I've seen of it, I like a lot. It's fun. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. I love how stylistic they have been with it. Oh, yeah. It, it's really, really fun. It, it definitely feels like a TV show. I will say that. Oh, it yeah. It definitely uh, feels like a TV show. It, I don't think um, it would, the way they're doing it, I don't think would have worked as a movie. Well, there would have been, it would, they would have made it work, but you could tell that it's a TV yeah. show because they didn't have the money to yeah. make it a movie. They didn't go all Obi-Wan Kenobi with this and make it like a six hour long feature length, <laughs> beautiful ass movie. <laughs> What the fuck is up with that, man? <laughs> oh, fuck, I I don't care. I loved it. I don't care either. I mean, they, they I just you could just tell they pumped some money into those episodes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were a lot, <laughs> there were a lot of things that didn't make sense in it, but I didn't care. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot but of you, things where I'm like, all right, the <laughs> the timeline does not fit. Oh, here. Oh no, like not even that. Not even that. I'm talking about the scene where they're on the planet and they fight those stormtroopers and they can't get through the gate. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought for sure he was just going to get right back in the truck and drive it through the gate. No, nope, they just walked. Yeah, I like, like I what? thought that too. I was like, what? why are you leaving the truck? Why did you, if you were just going to walk, why did you go through all that trouble of dropping the gate? My big ah. thing, my biggest problem with uh -huh. with Obi Wan Kenobi, problem being in great big air quotes, is I think I brought this up during the Star Wars episode, or I brought this up in another episode. The fact that Leia doesn't seem to know who Obi Wan is, 
like in the later movies, like in episode four, five, and six. Oh yeah, doesn't yeah. make a whole lot of sense with right. how much time she spent with him in this series. You know, I hate I hate to say it. I I don't want to be this guy, and please do not come for me in the comments. This is just if they didn't do this, I'd be completely fine. But please just hear me out. If they rebooted episodes four, five, and six. Okay. You know what I mean? It, Ep- it, just, it's something they could do with Star Wars. It's, I mean... It's a choice. Yeah. It's definitely a choice. They they did retcon, like, the entire extended universe. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's just mm-hmm. one more step to retcon the original three movies. Ooh, that would be... It, Oh, oh, the people will be salty. I don't think people be salty. I don't think they're gonna. I don't. No, think they're, they're not. Do that. They're not. They're not. <laughs> be, only because people are so would be so fucking salty. Mm-hmm. But it's like, but it's like, you know what, guys? Can can we really just let's have a sit down? Have a sit down. Get your tea. We're gonna have a little talk. Okay, let's just say they do reboot it. Okay. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. <laughs> let's just say they reboot it. You can still go back and watch your Luke Skywalker with Mark Hamill. Mm-hmm. He's still going to be there, mm-hmm. you know. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill's made his money. He's still Ooh. making his money. Let me let me say that probably would be my biggest Hold problem on. if they did reboot it because they'd uh-huh. probably do the CGI Mark Hamill. No, 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 no. You don't no, think no, so? No, 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 no. no. That they no, did get, for get, the yeah, Mandalorian or Book of Boba Fett or whatever. They'll get somebody else. They'll get somebody else. Just keep in mind. Hopefully, keep in mind. Keep in mind, uh huh, that stuff happened after episodes four, five, oh. and six. Yeah. So in this world, we would be rebooting four, five, and six. Okay. So when we re- so when we rebooted Mandalorian, that new Luke Skywalker would be in there. Oh, okay. All right. Because <laughs> <laughs> in my world, we would reboot the Mandalorian as well when we got there. Oh, eventually. You know, right, right, right. As however, we do, however many years down the line after you Look, and I'm I just have saying, left this we mortal ju- coil, <laughs> we just have to take everything from the grognards. We have to take it all away, because if we do this, it's taking it away from them, and they can't have it anymore. Mm, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> bitter week on the internet. Okay, God, I've had a very bitter week. Oh man, Twitter is horrible for for tabletop role playing game stuff. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. I always was like, I I saw the term grognard, and I'm like, you know what? I don't like that term. You know why? Because I'm I'm technically fitting in that. And it's like, you know what? I really don't. Mm-mm. Just because I like the old stuff doesn't mean I don't like the new stuff. Right. And then you get these people out here that are like, oh. Well, the only the only good game has been A D and D. That's the only good role playing game out there. It's like, man, if you like your Thacko, you have a good time, buddy. <laughs> you have a good time, buddy. You you go play it. I'm gonna be over it's here still with, there? with 5e. It, right, it still exists. Mm-hmm. You know what? 4e still exists. Mm-hmm. You can still play these things. Yep. You let me play my five E with my with my good line drow. And, you know, my uh, humans and elves and dwarves and halflings of all different shades and cultures and 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 loveliness. You just you just let me do these things. OK. Yep. OK. OK. You go have fun. I'll come play in your AD&D game in a little while. As long as you keep your fucking mouth shut about all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Other than that, you can play by yourself. Yeah. Have fun. You got you got other you know, 45 to 60 year old men that would be happy to play with you as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They can't wait. And and uh, I apologize to our uh, demographic of 45 to 60 year old white men who uh, actually come and enjoy and are uh, in agreement with us. Yeah. Not okay. that I'm saying that you have to agree with us to be able to be here. But in this case, eh. <laughs> look, no, no, no. You nope, don't have well, to oh, agree well. with us, but if you you don't have to tell people that they can't play 5e because you don't like it. Like, if you don't like 5e, that's fine. You don't have to agree with us there. Like You don't Ooh. have to like 5e. You don't have to like other role-playing games. You might think that AD&D is the only good one, but that doesn't mean you have to crap on everybody else's good time. Right, right. 
Well, that, that kind of goes into like the again, like the whole thing on Twitter right now. You have this D and D fifth edition versus Pathfinder second edition war happening right now, and it's so fucking dumb. Yes, I like D and D fifth edition better. Do you know why? Because I've never played Pathfinder second edition, and I hope to change that at some point. That's fair. I would very much like to play Pathfinder second edition. Am I being a bitch about it? No. But if I don't, if I end up liking Pathfinder Second Edition better in D and D Fifth Edition, guess what? I'm still gonna play Pathfinder, or I'm still gonna play Pathfinder Second Edition and D and D Fifth Edition. Why? Because I have people to play on both sides of the fence, and I like gaming. I, I like will, gaming. I will forever stay out of Edition Wars and Game Wars and things it's like so that, dumb. just because I was a fan of Fourth Edition, and yeah. like as a fan of Fourth Edition, I know what it's like to get shat right. on by and, literally everyone else because and, and it's so messed up because i hate fourth edition rick who introduced you to fourth edition you did oh isn't that crazy mm -hmm. oh no i brought joy into somebody else's life through something i didn't like and i can find value in an in an edition that i don't like oh no i maintain that fourth edition is a great miniatures game it is great. Mm -hmm. They release those board games there in conjunction mm -hmm. with these and essentially use the same system. Yeah. I'm like, that, that's fucking smart. Yep. That's smart. Good job, guys. <laughs> I And you know what? And I, and, I, and I have to agree. If I played it as a board game like they were releasing there for a little while, oh, man, I'd play that up and down because mm -hmm. it's great for that. Mm -hmm. Did I think that it was good for like a just a tabletop role playing game? No, I didn't like it, but I'm glad you did. Yeah, I'm glad it got it. It. I would like to think it essentially got you into D and D. Oh, 100 percent. There, there's no arguing that. So there's value in fourth edition, even though I don't like it. Yep. See, it's not that hard, guys. It's <laughs> not that hard. Quit being bitches about it. Look, if if on a another person's podcast you can go listen to the episode we were on for duke and duchess i can admit that something good came out of dragon ball evolution if i can admit that <laughs> you can admit that something good came out of these other things <laughs> he's he's right though he's right all right so I I have to shift gears here because your reaction when I brought it up earlier, Umbrella Academy season three, fucking loved it. I did loved too. It. But what the fuck was that ending? Hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, there it is. I had to find it. <laughs> there was so much that happened in that episode that yep. I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There it is. Yeah, weird, weird. Yeah, like what what. Does and all it, of this imply what is the like? Look, again, look, I spoilers, am, spoilers, oh, yeah, spoilers, always spoilers. Go ahead, go ahead. Look, I am one of those people that people don't like to watch movies and shows with because I have shit figured out way before it's over. Like mm -hmm. that ending, even after it was over, I was still confused. I was just like, stunned. What the fuck just happened? Right. And, and can I can I point something weird out? So how how bad is it? When you can get so used to a character mm -hmm. and then like it just the, the physical appearance of somebody. Mm -hmm. And then when you see them as a normal person, you're like, oh, God, they look weird. <laughs> you normal ass person look weird. Like, yeah. where's where's your where's the rest of you? Bulbous, oh, yeah. <laughs> Where, where's the rest of you? Oh, man. Yeah, because it was like. <laughs> Where's your weird bulbous body, sir? I don't understand what's going on right now. Because like the rest, of it doesn't like that looked normal to me at this point. Like you now yeah. you're changing it, and like this this is not normal, right? Well, it's 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 bad. I mean, like in terms of like how it um it like affected my mind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've seen this man in other movies and just never knew it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was in Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh my god, I think he was. I'm pretty sure he was. Again, as a normal... Like, he didn't look weird there. Yeah. But, you know, you get so used to seeing someone a certain way, and then all of a sudden... Mm-hmm. Well, son of a bitch. 
Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it. And I and here's here's one thing I do want to touch on. A, as some of you may know, Elliot Page did come out as trans lately. Mm-hmm. In between seasons of Umbrella Academy, in which he was playing Vanya mm-hmm. Hargreaves, but then they had him even transition in the show to Victor Hargreaves. They handled that so fucking well. Mm-hmm. I was really impressed with how they handled it and how they they worked that into the story. Mm-hmm. And it's it, it's almost like it like because I, I believe that mm, they made it make sense with things that had happened in previous seasons. Well, They're yeah, like they yeah. made it make sense with the story so much. It's like the well, character made more sense mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of the transition. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is because of. Because of Victor Hargreaves' journey, mm-hmm. it m- made sense. I think just things lined up perfectly. Mm-hmm. Because in season two, he hadn't come out yet. Nope. I do believe in between season one and two, Elliot came out as bisexual, I believe? I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember. I mean, Elliot Page is just, I think, is just an amazing actor anyways. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I've, I've loved everything he's been in. And I think that I, I think that I think the showrunners really did a good thing with allowing him to transition the character as well. Yeah, and it's I'm not going to say that there aren't other trans stories out there, but to put one this mainstream and to handle it so well, like a lot of the other trans stories, they either beat you over the head with it or they're so soft with it they have to tell you afterwards like oh yeah that character was trans like right right this i think it was just the right amount of addressing it and moving on yeah i mean and you know mind you i'm i'm not trans Mm -hmm. i i have not experienced that life i don't know what a trans person goes through when they come out or even when they stay in the closet you know, when they keep that to themselves because they're afraid or just not ready. Mm-hmm. I don't know that experience. Right. H- however, I would like to think that this was realistic. It seemed realistic to me. Mm-hmm. You know believable. what I mean? If nothing else, yeah. it was believable. Like, we can't, right. because we aren't trans, we can't say that it's realistic. We can't say, you know, that we felt heard because obviously that's not us. We hope that if you are trans and you saw it, that you felt heard and you felt seen. And uh, we can say that we found it believable the way it was handled, because a lot of times in these movies, they go so over top with it that it's like, people don't talk like this. People don't have conversations like like this. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It Mm -hmm. didn't. I've seen some other things where the, the subject of transness came up and it just was like, people don't talk like this. Yeah. Well, like, well, you know, perfect example, um, Star, uh, Star Trek Discovery. Mm -hmm. There's a character in there who is non-binary and the way they handled it was like they, they had already been in the show for a while. Mm -hmm. And then like, I think it was the season, the next season they were talking to someone was talking to them and they were, and they addressed them as her and they were like, oh, it's, it's they, them. I'm I'm non-binary and they it's like that's almost exactly what they said I'm like okay mm-hmm. well first off it, it it seems weird to have been addressed this late in the game mm-hmm. like that yeah you know what I mean with Elliot and Victor it, it just seemed like they were coming to that realization we saw the realization happening yep. I think that's what it is we saw the realization happening mm-hmm. but with them but also I would like to point out this is Star Trek mm-hmm in the future where like these things are not only accepted, but it's no longer a social issue at that point. It is not a social issue at all. Yeah. So for them to approach it like that, for them to have been seemingly been keeping it in the closet and then revealing it all of a sudden, it's like, but why? It's like, this is, this is star Trek. This is the future utopia. You know, (laughs) why, why, why are these things seemingly still being kept secret? Why does it seem like it's still being kept secret? Right. It's like, if it was Star Trek, I almost feel like it should have just, there shouldn't have been a conversation at all. 
they should have just started calling them they them. Mm-hmm. Like, bleh, no talk, no nothing. It is just so accepted that it's a non-issue. Yep, they just updated it in their registry for Starfleet <laughs> and just done. But only because that's Star Trek, though. Only because that's Star Trek. Yeah. I, I, I think that a conversation needs to happen in different worlds. Mm-hmm. But I think that the lack of conversation would would have said way more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I will say that the person that they came out to accepted it without question. Right. Like, it wasn't it wasn't even an issue. And I'm like, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. Perfect. But I, I almost think that, again, the lack of conversation is what would have said more. Because yeah. it is it is not an issue. Yeah. It is it is so socially accepted at this point that people don't. It's not even it's not a thing. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to point out, since we were talking about Umbrella Academy, we were talking about things we were excited about that were coming out. And we had brought about Umbrella Academy and you wanted to know what happens when Klaus dies. And that's something we got to see. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I will say this. I will say this. I did have a I did have a bit of knowledge going into it. Mm hmm. And the only reason why I said I want to know what happens when Klaus dies is because, again, with the Marvel conversation, people tend to do things differently from comic to thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I don't think I knew exactly that he was immortal. Mm-hmm. But I knew that he a few times, like or a few times, he had died and come back. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I knew at that point that he was that was his thing. Yeah. You know, when he dies. Now, you know what the fucked up thing about that is? This is the second character in a superhero TV show that has had that power played by him. I did not know that. He was in a TV show uh, on the BBC called Misfits. Okay. It was something happened and these these kids got powers. Now, these kids were essentially on juvenile detention where they had to go and do community service Mm -hmm. and they got powers and they each got very visible powers Mm -hmm. throughout the whole like i want to say even two seasons you never knew what his fucking power was (laughs) because it did it didn't show itself you know and then one time he died and i think they buried him and he came back oh geez and then and then that's when they figured out oh he can't die Mm mm-hmm so yeah, second character in the superhero TV show where he has a character that is immortal. He's got the same superpower as Kenny McCormick. Yep. Yes, he does. <laughs> but I do I do like how like the different aspects of his power set work too. Cuz he like he can control ghosts or harness ghosts mm-hmm. or yeah. You know, he, he yeah. I I I do like I do like characters who like harness ghost powers and shit like that. Uh, Danny, Danny Phantom, mm-hmm. I thought was just, it was such a good idea for a superhero character. He's super cool character. Yeah. And like, super also cool. like the way his powers evolved over the seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, then they show him grown up and stuff. That was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Man, we're, we're going into some <laughs> deep dives here, aren't we? <laughs> um, I, and I do want to, and I do want to say this. You know, if I haven't pissed you off and you made it this far, if you are trans and want to talk to us about your take on these things that we've talked about, please do, because I would really like to know your side of things, whether you agree or whether you don't agree. Because like I said, I am coming at this from a very cis perspective. Yes. A very cis nerdy perspective, but cis nonetheless. So, I mean, definitely... If I, it's not your job to educate me, but I, I beg of you to do so, please. Yeah. If, um, if you want to, like, it's not your job, but if you want absolutely. to, if you have some things you want to say, mm-hmm. we're open. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, I, I don't want to just know what to say. I, I honestly just don't know. Yeah. Uh, again, just and if coming I'm out of be honest, of... that it does interest me. Like I, I yeah. a lot of, like a lot of other things where it's a topic I don't know. Like one of my favorite shows is Adam Ruins Everything just because it goes into a bunch of shit I don't know about and mm-hmm. they educate me on it. I like being educated on things I don't know about. I find that interesting. Yep. So and like it or not, um the in America, what is the word I'm looking for? Minority populations end up kind of creating their own culture out of necessity. Yeah. And 
because of that, people who are in the mainstream of culture, you know, middle-aged white men, don't get to see that culture very often. And rightly so, it's it's a place of safety and, Mm -hmm. you know, safety is needed. And if that means that I don't get to join that space, then you know what? So be it. That's fine. I'll stand outside the gate and make sure no one gets in. Yep. But in that case, I just don't know what's going on. So if you would like to give me any kind of insight as to, again, your perspective on how these subjects of transness are handled in these TV shows and movies of geek culture, please. We may even just turn it into a whole thing. If you mm-hmm. want to make, if you want to come in for an episode, we're about due for another representation in geek culture. Rep- yes, a representation in geek culture episode too. So, mm-hmm. and just because you want to talk to us about it doesn't mean you have to be on air. Like, if you're not comfortable ex- exactly. being on air, exactly. Like, but you have something you want to say to us, that's what I've got the email for: castersguild yep. at gmail dot com. Please email us or come talk to us on the Discord. But if you know. Pick your level of comfortability with being public about it. Like, if you don't want, if you want only us to see it, message us individually on Discord or email us. If you would like our community to see it, talk about it openly in one of our Discord channels. If you want to shout it to the rooftops, we'll gladly have you on the podcast and you can shout it to the rooftops. Absolutely. But speaking of things that you called, Klaus, seeing what happens when Klaus died, you also called going way back to Thor Love and Thunder. You wanted to see Hercules. Fuck yeah! And there he was. Fuck yes! And he looks so fucking good. Mm -hmm. Oh, so hard. I mean, happy to see him (laughs) in there. Oh, so cool. It was such a surprise, too. Because, you know, I think everybody was thinking that they were going to pick some mainstream actor or whatever Mm -hmm. like that. And then, like, you know, when he when Zeus was just chilling there and he's talking about this, they they did a really good job because here I'm thinking, oh, you know, Zeus is going to do something. He's going to be like, oh, you know, we're going to do this. And then, you know, maybe something falls on him and he dies because, you know, <laughs> Taika Watiti. Yeah. But then when he said, what do you think, my son or something like that? As soon as he said my son, I'm like, let's go. <laughs> and then they flipped over to him and he's like. For some reason, already crouched and <laughs> he, he oh, I guess he could have been bowing. From he the pictures I've seen, I mean, like I didn't want read the comics, obviously, but the pictures I've seen, he looked pretty comic book accurate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That outfit. Mm-hmm. That outfit was spot on, and he even had the mace, the mm-hmm. golden mace. Um, oh, looked so good, so good. I'm really, really hoping that like uh thor 5 is like a god war or some shit like that but if i had to guess if i had to guess hercules thunderbolts hercules is going to be in thunderbolts now i say that because Ares was originally in thunderbolts guess who we haven't seen <laughs> right no Ares. um but i i really think that with the big push that um with the big push that the MCU is going for in terms of like the Thunderbolts, because you have y- Yelena Belova, you have maybe not Echo, maybe not Echo, but US Agent. And man, I really hope that they bring US Agent back. I really hope that the fans didn't really hate him out of the MCU. And, and let me tell you, actor whose name I've completely forgotten, even though you're super famous and your dad is super famous and I really <laughs> loved your character. Let me tell you. If you are worried about how people are talking about you, please go to AEW, go to WWE, go to any kind of wrestling thing and talk to the bad guys there. Mm -hmm. Please. They love to be hated because that's their job. Mm -hmm. You are the bad guy, kind of. Yeah. You you please love to be hated. You are the mostly bad-ish guy. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. You're... You read the comics, buddy. U.S. agent's kind of a dick. Yeah. Live it up. Live it up. Yeah. You're not like that in real life. I realize that. You are good intention, uh, bad execution all the way is through. It, is he a Russell? I think he's a Russell. I think he's Kurt Russell's son. I don't know. Mm, man, if only we had, like, a supercomputer at our fingertips. Right. And, man, again, I'm sorry, Kurt Russell's son, for, you know... 
uh, referring to you as Kurt Wyatt Russell. What a cool name, too. How did I forget Wyatt Russell? I don't know. That, Wyatt that is a pretty cool name. Russell. Oh, God damn it. I'm sorry, Wyatt Russell. You're a cool guy. You're a cool guy, and you should really come back. But, you know, I get it. It's your career. You can do what you want. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot yeah. of cool things they could do with that character, like from here on out, too. Oh, yeah. Um, but also, like, if they're going to do a Thunderbolts, you get. Um, oh, God, we just went back to Marvel. I just realized this. Fuck it. Um, it's my fault. I brought up Hercules. You're right. You did. You did. So you get you get Yelena Belova, right? Then you get Wyatt Russell in as U.S. agent. And then you get Hercules in. So you, now you have, like, the Black Widow, Captain America, Thor. Uh, fuck it. Abomination. Abomination's going to be a thing. Uh, well, maybe. We'll see what happens in She-Hulk. So there's four Thunderbolts. Daredevil's coming back, which means that we're going to get a bullseye. There's your Hawkeye. There's your Avengers there right is. there. There it is. There's um, your team. We still need we still need an Iron Man because I, I think Thunderbolts had had fucking um Norman Osborn as Iron <laughs> Holy Patriot. shit. So I don't think that they're not <laughs> getting that. <laughs> that ain't <laughs> happening. Um but but I could see them doing Iron Patriot with the voice modulator and just choosing somebody to be like a big reveal mid movie. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. That would and, be you know, cool. maybe it could be Justin Hammer. Justin Hammer would be cool to come back. I don't think he is a fighter per se. God, I, I but hate he, that character so much. I know oh, that's so the much. point. I know that's the right, point. Right, right, but right, I right. hate that character so <laughs> much. <laughs> Sam Rockwell, man, he's uh, oh yeah about that man. Yeah, he he puts it in there like yeah. the, the performance he delivers. Oh, mm-hmm. punchable face, man. <laughs> punchable. <laughs> but I, man, no. Never mind. I was about to say they better not fuck around and put like Doctor Doom on a team. Doctor Doom is not a team guy. Don't do that, please. Like that's not a good idea. But mm-hmm. but we do got to see some more Fantastic Four stuff soon. Uh yeah, I'm looking at a leak right now. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like there is oh there's a leak on a front runner for Reed Richards. Okay. And it's not Jim. No, no. <laughs> uh, and I and I will say, I will say that the the leak is coming from Inverse. Uh, I got to give credit where credits due. Um, do you want to hear the leak? Yeah, go for it. They are uh, they are alleging that you actor Pen Bad Bad Badgley Pen Badgley is a front runner for Reed Richards. The I'm leak looking also him mentions up right now. The leak also mentions which actors are being considered for the rest of the cast, including one Stranger Things star. I wonder if that means they're thinking of David Harbour being a certain blue-eyed thing. Ooh, that would be cool. And I gotta say, I I just looked up Penn Badgley, and uh, that motherfucker looks like Reed Richards. Yeah, no, I'm not. I don't hate it. I I don't hate it at all. I don't know anything about him acting he's from baltimore apparently which hey um, Baltimore. but uh i don't know anything about his acting career or what he's like but yeah motherfucker looks like Mm -hmm. reed richards if nothing else yeah i'm down for it oh see so they're they're oh i'm sorry what so they're talking about percy jackson star logan lerman could wind up being the Human Torch. I don't know who Logan Lerman is. Melissa Benoist and Natalia Dyer are both seemingly in the running for Sue Storm. Uh, if you don't know who those are, Melissa Benoist is Supergirl, and Natalia Dyer is, I believe, Nancy is her name in Stranger Things. Oh, okay. Uh, Logan, by the way, is Percy in Percy Jackson. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. You, you mean the original Percy Jackson, right? There was more than one. Well, there's the TV show coming out. Oh, well, the one <laughs> the, from the, the Percy Jackson out. movies that that okay. I've seen, he is Percy. I was about to say the, t- the TV show. He's a straight up child. So I, I think I answered my own question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you no, know, that would you know what? That would be kind of a funny take on the Fantastic Four. You have, you know, Reed, Sue, Ben and Johnny and have Johnny be legit a teenage child. 
Yeah, that would be and, that and would have be been, a take on have it. him being yeah, have him be in the Fantastic Four and mm-hmm. let him moonlight in the Young Avengers. I would enjoy that immensely. I feel like it would also give him a connection because like eventually it'll happen again where Spider Man will come in again and Spider Man always had a connection with the Fantastic Four and like you could even See, have them go to the same school or something, like, you know, or that, that's kind of what I was hoping is we would get an introduction to the Fantastic Four through Spider Man. Right. But I mean eh. But I, I believe that what we're gonna get is an introduction to them through the Quantum Mania. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Also also I, I've been doing some thinking, just a little shout out. The at the the a post credit scene Spider-Man Far From Home. Mm-hmm. Wait. Yeah, Far From Home, where you see the little blip of Venom symbiote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that Spider-Man is going to be in Secret Wars. Spider-Man No Way Home. No Way Home. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I think that we're going to see Spider-Man in Secret Wars, and that's where he's going to connect with the Venom symbiote. Okay. And I think that in Spider-Man 5, we are going to get him as Black Suit Spider-Man, where he will eventually fight Venom. But in the meantime, Fantastic Four will have a cameo in the next Spider-Man movie. Yeah, you think instead of them getting um, oh no no they're RDJ already, they're already and be... Iron Man in the Spider-Man movies, they're going to get the Fantastic well, Four. Well, just like there have been big cameos in each of them from the MCU. So you mm-hmm. have the first Spider-Man was uh, Iron Man. The second one was a oh, whole man. <laughs> What's his name? Nick, Nick Fury. Fury. <laughs> God damn it. And then the third one was uh, Doctor Strange, and yeah, the, and that's that true. crew. I think that, and of course, Happy because Happy's always been. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he's about to get phased out though. Yeah, I I think that they're going to continue that tradition of big name Marvel cameos showing up in the uh, Spider Man movies. So that's I think the trade off because like Disney's like we get to use Spider Man for a movie, you get to use whatever hero. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that I think that Spider-Man five is going to be the cameo, the big cameo for Spider-Man five and interaction with is going to be the fantastic four. That makes sense. Maybe That's, I would love yeah. to see bombastic Bagman at some point in time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, so I, I will say that this is probably one of my few theories that I've kind of developed on my own without any kind of prodding or inspiration from anybody else. So we'll see how this one plays out. We'll see how this one plays out. All right. I can't even really claim Hercules because I've been predicting him for at least five different Marvel properties. So yeah. this one just made sense. But so did Loki. But you know, whatever. Anyways. So to come off of Marvel again. We did talk about some Stranger Things actors possibly being in Fantastic mm-hmm, Four. Mm-hmm. What'd you think about that new season of Stranger Things? Okay, so everybody was like, and I'm going to toot my own horn here. You you know me. I don't toot my own horn very much. So I was told that, you know, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry during this. Mm-hmm. Um, during this. I didn't. Okay. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, this was great. And yes, I, I fucking loved Eddie. Loved him. Oh yeah, he yeah. was the he was the breakout runaway star for me. But I didn't cry. Yeah, it was emotional. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, I post about the satanic panic. Mm-hmm. You know, you lived in the eighties. You knew about the satanic panic. Mm-hmm. Um, there was at one point my mother even accused me of being a devil worshiper because I played D anD D. So I put a post up that pretty much said, "Hey, you know, the satanic panic sucked." And not for the reasons you think. It's because of this and this and this. Mm-hmm. I had someone who I hardly know. I know more from reputation and friends of friends. Mm-hmm. They're friends with me on Facebook. And they got on there and they were like, look, if it makes you feel any better to me and my friends in middle school, you were our Eddie Munson. Oh, and I fucking as soon as that I read had that, to I do did, it. Oh, it did. Oh, it did. God. There was like there was like flood banks that I didn't realize were just keeping everything at bay and as soon as they said that it was like "Uh (laughs) uh-huh just tears tears it it wrecked me and I loved it 
Yeah. I mean, I love that they, you know, said that. It was wonderful, but killed me, man. I also didn't cry, but if I was going to, it wouldn't have been when they lost Eddie, but when Dustin gave Eddie's dad, like, the... What, what, what did he give him? The pick? No, the necklace? Mm, no, the pick. It was a pick it necklace. Was a pick, it was pick necklace, so I was, I was yeah, right yeah. both times. And it was his uncle. It was his uncle. Uncle, yeah. He gave his uncle... And I don't know why, but it was like the whole uncle thing made me feel even more... Because it's like, his parents were not in the picture. Yeah. This man That's loved man him chose. like his own son. Yeah, like, he, was, he didn't have to... He chose that relationship. And he never wavered in his support of him either. Mm -mm. He never once believed that Eddie was capable of this. I'm like, this man, mm -hmm. this this man deserves way more credit than yeah. it's like. It's almost like his conviction convinced us more to love this guy. Yeah. Ugh. But speaking of the satanic panic, I also uh, just this past week got in my first order from one of our affiliates, T Villain. And I gotta say, it's pretty awesome. I got the shirt that was the list that was like, um, oh god, now I forget exactly what it says on it. I had to go get the shirt out of my closet, but it was like metal and dungeons and dragons and Satan and panic. It was like the, right. the list, and like it came with a free set of dice. Uh, it's pretty cool. And I got my mechanic shirt that's black, and it says on Wednesday so we wear black. Nice. And uh, T Villain, you should go check them out. It's a t shirt site where you'll find a killer limited edition shirt being sold for $13 for only 24 hours. The following 24 hours will feature a new design and so on and so forth. They choose the most ingenious designs that reflect everything evil and villainy, as well as works pertaining to anything artistic, pulp style, lowbrow, pulp culture, TV, movies, music, video games, comics, etc. All things cool and evil, basically. To check them out and help Pastors Guild, click our link in the description. Um, and, and I also saw quite a few people wearing the the Thor Tank Girl shirt when we went to go see the movie. Really? Yeah. I saw like That's two people really cool. wearing that shirt. Yeah. I wore mine. Yep. I wore mine. And and I will have to I will have to say, uh, anybody listening, and I mean, you know, the ad is over, but just just to repoint out, I oh literally wearing their shirts right now one of their shirts right now i shopped here well before we started becoming an affiliate with them so i i i personally advocate for their product it, it, they have great shirts and you can get a bunch of different styles of shirts you know you have your you know your low cut your uh, mechanic shirts you have mm -hmm. long sleeve short sleeves and sometimes you can even change the color of them they also have a really cool community in their like Facebook. They like have mm -hmm. a Facebook group, the the League of Do Batters, I think it is. <laughs> um, yeah, go check yeah. them out. So I think I was reading something about how they've announced. I I couldn't determine whether they were saying that this season of Stranger Things or the next season of Stranger Things is the last one. Next season, they yeah, have one yeah, more yeah. season. That's what I thought. I thought this season was supposed to be the last one, but apparently they got one more in them. Yeah, I think I think they're gonna go full circle, and I think we're gonna have another season centered around Will, like with the way you saw like the hairs on his neck stand up like toward the end of the season. Like I think they're hinting that you know they're they're just gonna go full circle because you know he was the one who was missing in season one, and I think they're finally gonna come back to that. Mm -hmm. Like I think the amount of time he spent his in the upside down has done something to him, and we're gonna see something come of that. Yeah. I kind of thought that they were going to like after, you know, the, they beat Vecna. I kind of thought that maybe Will was going to come in and be like the main bad guy. But mm -hmm. I don't think we're quite done with Vecna. So, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm excited to see where they go with it. And I think that they are just going to go hard on the emotion on this last season, too. Oh, yeah, they gotta. They gotta. It's it. They have done the thing that a lot of series do where they they've had to ramp up every season. They're like, we did this last season. We got to do that much more the next season, uh, which is probably why one of the reasons that this next season is the, their last one. Cause like mm -hmm. they can only top their self, themselves for so long. Yep. Before and you get so in like the ridiculous territory that like the fast and the furious series finds themselves in. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, at some point you got to be like, you know what? Just let it die. Yeah. Let it go. Let it end when it's supposed to end. Any, you know, any good story comes, every good story comes to an end. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that it ends before it becomes a bad story. Yep. All right. So now that we've spent so much time speaking on everything talking else. about Marvel and talking mm -hmm. about everything else, let's do a quick into what, what do you think of season three so far? Well, um, like I said, I'm really enjoying the collaborations that we've gone into. I feel like that we've been hitting a pretty good stride. I will say this: a lot of stuff, a lot of talking about stuff that we're going to do and uh, stuff that we want to do, and we just kind of haven't gotten to it yet. Mm -hmm. it, it it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. I mean, it, you know, we're we're doing. Uh, one show a week, which, you know, doesn't seem like a lot of work, but, you know, when, you know, you got to, you know, record and come up with ideas and schedule people and edit and get it released mm -hmm. on time. All while Rick we're does doing our, our normal full time jobs. Right. But that's what that's what makes it a lot, honestly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it especially be that big like of a deal we... if, this, if this was our only job, like if this was what we were, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But if this was our only job, we'd probably be doing more. We'd be doing a lot more, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, especially when you and I both have gotten new jobs this year as well. Yeah, that's true. That It's been a lot. It's mm -hmm. been a lot. But uh, I, I think we've been doing good for what we could do. I, I'm really proud of how we, we've we kind of stuck with it. And 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 we haven't... I, I don't think we've sold out, mostly because no one's offered us money. But um, <laughs> I, I think that we've stayed true to our ideals of let's just have some fun. Yeah, let's absolutely. let's keep each other sane. I mean, even with the collaborations that we've done, it was never with the intention of going big, you know, places with it. It's mm -hmm. always been, hey, these are people that we think we like. So yeah. we want to talk with you and 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 do these things. Because uh, let me say, we've had the opportunity to do a collaboration with someone whose views we did not agree with, who could have mm. sent us into popularity and got us a bunch of listens. And we just chose not to do that because we have more integrity than that. Integrity. Mm-hmm. Integrity. But yeah, no, as soon as, as soon as I heard about said views, it was just like, well, I know he said no. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm still gonna wait for him to tell me that he said no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was, uh, I, we were gonna do it, and then I found out, like some another guild member pointed out to me. Oh man, it was like, and it was like real close to the time. Oh yeah, too, it was wasn't real it? close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it man. was like that yeah. week. God, get fucked, guy. Seriously, <laughs> man. Yeah, I mean, and and it's. Yeah, I mean, especially when it comes to stuff like that, it's like no, I don't even want to, I don't even want to link myself to that. So right, exactly. So yeah, but you know, who knows? Who knows where we would have went? Maybe we would have been the same as we were now. Regardless, we yep. would have said no. You could have guaranteed me, guaranteed me that we would have been jump started into into uh you know more success as soon as we did this i still wouldn't have wanted to do it yeah same because i wouldn't have wanted <laughs> the kind of success it exactly would have come with that yep uh, <sighs> yeah. but anyway what do we have planned for the rest of season three well i think you know more podcasts more podcasts yeah but also mm -hmm. i have been kicking around some stuff and I believe that uh, we are going to be doing a new show called Hot Takes. It's basically going to be a short format, you know, much shorter than this. I was, and, and I'll, I'll give my, I'll give my mindset behind it. You know, I'm not one of those people who will, who will pretend like I got everything together and I know what I'm doing and everything mm -hmm. I'm doing is for a reason. Guess, you know what? I just, I'm not great at video editing. I mm -hmm. don't know exactly what I'm doing with that stuff. It's a lot of work, especially when you're trying to get other people involved. We're going to do it audio until we get more comfortable with some video stuff. But it's a short format where I have one guest. It's mm -hmm. me and one guest. 
and I essentially give them a prompt, and they give me their hot take on it. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, this is going to be real good for uh, viewer engagement because I'm pretty sure that we're going to get a lot of people reacting to some of these hot takes. So, <laughs> and if you have uh, a hot yeah. take, if you're listening, you have a hot take. Let us know in our Discord. Maybe we'll have you on for an episode of Hot Takes. Yep, I'm I'm looking I'm looking for a 15 minute quote unquote conversation rant you know not, nothing more than 15 <laughs> minutes i just give you 15 minutes to rant about whatever you want to mm-hmm. uh, that is that given subject and you know we we post it yep we're gonna go for it we got some we got some cool episodes coming up too um i got some stuff Ooh. that i'm, I'm Ooh, not wait, gonna... hold on yeah and then afterwards we can vote on the hot take oh yeah 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 see how fire it is <laughs> I like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Go how ahead. saucy is your hot take? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but we do have some cool episodes coming up. Some stuff I'm not going to announce yet because there, there's one episode in particular that we've been trying to put together since the beginning of season three where our guests um, have had some uncontrollable things that have made it so they can't record. But I've been talking with them again and maybe we're going to have them on so i'm very excited about that we're going to talk about some iconic video game music coming up soon um we're going to talk about conventions maybe do some survival guides we're going to talk about cosplay and at some point in time i know there are going to be a couple of people at least that are excited about this we're going to finish out the test trilogy before the end of this season we we've done both both of the first two at the in this season why not finish it out this season why well. hold on to it? So we're going to finish that out at some point in time. We're going to do another top tens this season. Get the um, fuck out of here. We've already decided on our lists. So Have we? Yeah. Oh, wait. No, I mean, I was there. I was there. <laughs> you know, it's we're not slowing down, people. We're halfway done. We're, we're going to keep the pedal to the floor all the way to the end. Oh, and... uh keep an eye out uh, it's about time i start talking about it first weekend of november we'll be doing our 24-hour charity stream so keep an eye Hell out yeah. for that got if... some got some potentially cool plans with that i'm mm-hmm. um, really hoping that i can pull some of that off and if there's something that you would like to see us play during the 24-hour stream let us know casterskills gmail.com or our discord Hell yeah! I'll do anything I can to fill that 24 hours. If you've got some I've good got, ideas, I, I have no problem stealing them. I've got so many hentai games all loaded up for this charity stream. It, <laughs> you streaming oh, on no? streaming on Pornhub there, buddy? <laughs> can, can, I, am I, can I not? You know, is this not a Twitch thing I can do? you got to stream on Chatterbait for 24 hours of <laughs> hentai games? I mean, watch me. <laughs> watch me. Oh, man. Bear plays hentai games on Chatterbait. Boy, that actually probably could get some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man, I was going to talk about something else, and I just completely lost it. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing oh. else, you could stream it live in the honeypot. Oh, yeah, I could. <laughs> If anybody else is uh, wondering what the hell we're talking about, in our Discord, we have a room called the Honey Pot, which is essentially the VIP room of the Bear Den, which is the all-male strip club that we talked about in one of our podcasts. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. There's nothing in it. Don't rush to the Discord and expect to see anything. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> like a voice channel that we've never been in. <laughs> right. <laughs> but hey, you, you donate enough to our charity and you might. Yeah, you know what? You you If you donate enough, yeah, I'll, you know what? I'll, you might I'll get, get a get private a session in, yeah, in the honeypot. Right. <laughs> you know what? I'll put I'll put on a I'll put on a, a, a red uh, red t-shirt. a red cut off shirt. And I will eat honey right in front of you. I'll do mm-hmm. it. It'll be messy too. The honey everywhere. Uh, but yeah, we got big though. We got a lot of other cool episodes coming up. We want to do one about gaming on a budget. We want to do one about uh, mental health. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We want to. I want to revisit horror games again. 
Uh, yeah, and it's... I I think that I think that we also on top of on top of these podcasts that we're doing, we're never going to stop doing these podcasts. They're too much fun. Mm-hmm. But we're also talking about doing more short format stuff for you as well. Mm-hmm. So keep an eye out for those. We haven't gotten anything officially worked out past uh, hot takes, but just keep an eye out for some of the new stuff we're wanting to do. Keep an eye out for some Casters Guild cantrips. That's right. Mm-hmm. But what what else are we looking to do? You know, hopefully that, I'll, all the, I'll get off all... my lazy ass and start posting some more episodes as audiograms on YouTube. So if you oh. like watching on YouTube, hopefully we'll. That is, a, it's yeah, it's yeah. just uh, I got a lot on my plate. So also uploading to YouTube is just one of those things that's hit the back burner. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which is which is fine. Really, the the YouTube stuff is generally just a convenience for people who don't normally just fuck with Spotify and stuff. Right. So yeah. Um, maybe I'm thinking maybe I might start streaming on Twitch leading up to Extra Life. Just kind of ramp up to it because 24 hour streaming is, is kind of a big deal it can be rough to go from no streaming to 24 hours worth of streaming mm-hmm. yeah i'm i'm gonna you know what that's another thing too i'm really thinking about oh, it's a little self-promotion mm-hmm. i'm i really need to get back onto my stream as well so if you miss seeing me on there or want to see me on twitch you know send me your encouragement i i really need the motivation to get back on there Oh, another reason to come check out our Discord, we've got a new channel called Game Master for Hire, where you're going to have game masters who don't have a game runner right now or have some extra time in their schedule, uh, where you can pay a DM to run a game for you. Um, or if or if you have a free-use GM that's throwing themselves out there, then mm-hmm. there you go. And I want to say, like... Why does that sound dirty? I haven't talked to too many of the other uh, game masters, but I know... Me and Baron both plan on jumping on there, and the prices we have talked about are very reasonable. And if you just want us to run a game for you, there's your chance. There's your shot. Yep. Shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. I've had plenty <laughs> of people. And I will also be offering my services as an instructional DM as well, where I will do a one to three session introduction to D&D to teach you the game and teach you what you need to do to be able to play the game, maybe even run the game. Though, to run the game, I think it's going to be a longer session than that. But Right. But yeah, so we have a lot of stuff coming up, and we're excited about all of it, honestly. Yeah, I am. I'm very excited. Hopefully we'll be... I'm not sure if it'll happen before the end of Season 3, but my something maybe look forward to Season 4 is maybe attending some conventions and doing live convention coverage. Mm-hmm. Even if it's even if it's just us hitting like one mm-hmm. convention, even if it's just us, you know, just one convention where we can show up together to. Yeah, yeah, we'll do we'll do our best to put that together. But yeah, like I said, this is the halfway point, and in in a way, it almost feels like we're just getting started. Yeah, I think every every season we seem to put more and more on our plates. Mm-hmm. I think that we do okay. I know. I also know that we we start. Let me tell you, we started this season out with huge fucking plans. Like we were talking and doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but I think that thankfully realism set in. Yeah. And we we calmed the fuck down a little bit. Yeah. Um. But also, I know when we started this season, had we started our jobs by now. Yeah. But I think in between season is when we had all these ideas, which is before we got these new jobs. Yeah. And then we got these new jobs and we were like, holy, holy (laughs) shit. This is a lot. Yeah. So, um, but I'd like to think that now that we are getting into the swing of things, we are going to be able to handle these things easier and uh, we will be able to bring you some of this, uh, prime content that you deserve and we're just excited to bring to you which uh th- this actually jogged my memory um for the 24 hour charity stream there's some stuff i had planned on doing for the podcast i just wasn't sure how we were going to do it on the podcast like the format of the podcast it just doesn't work that we're going to be live it's so there's going to be video you can see us during the 24-hour charity stream so i think there's some things that i have been i've been keeping in my back pocket that we might do 
we might do some Pokemon Smash or Pass. We might cook you a meal. I don't know how you how you feel about that, but maybe. Wait, wait. I, I will have to say the Smash or Pass thing does really well on my uh, TikTok for some reason. Yeah, I I don't get it, but fuck it. <laughs> and hey, if you have a list of characters or a list of people you want us to do other than Pokemon, like if you want to know, maybe I think the D and D Monster Manual is a little too big. You, like no, it might you know be, what we might do be too much. No, this is what we do. Um, we will open up. We will open up a uh, Discord channel specifically for people to post their Smasher Pass ideas. We will go through them, and then each one we will we will do Smasher Pass. We will obviously pass on any problematic things that you post in there. So mm-hmm. let's be reasonable here, guys. Let's make sure that every uh, every suggestion passes the Harkness test. If it passes the Harkness test, right? Then... I don't even know what that is. Oh, okay, so. Are you familiar with Doctor Who? Who? There is a character named uh, Jack Harkness. You, you've actually caught me up. I know. I know who uh-huh. Jack Harkness is. He's a bit of a horn dog. A little bit of one, right? But he there's a set of rules for like people Jack Harkness would bone. Did he say this? Uh, no, it's just something oh. that kind of like the internet okay. came up with. <laughs> I, so um, someone made this up. It wasn't yeah. like officially in a show. Okay. No. That's funny. Um, so there are rules. Um, I'm looking them up right now so I don't get them wrong. And I will tell you the, the – because it's not a lot of rules. <laughs> One, does you, does the creature have human intelligence or greater? So it has to okay, be, you know – To be fair – to be fair, that knocks out all the Pokemon. It does not, actually. If you watch that no? show, they've got human level intelligence. They don't communicate the same way we do, but they've got human oh, level okay, intelligence. That's fair. That's fair. You're right. Can it talk or otherwise communicate with language? It doesn't have to be your language, but can it communicate? So basically it has to be intelligent enough to provide consent, and it has to be able to communicate with you to provide consent. Okay. And it is it of sexual maturity for its species? Okay. So it has to it can't be a minor for its species. So it doesn't matter that Grogu is fifty years old. Grogu would have to be an immediate pass because he does not pass the Harkness test. Right. I will also add no four hundred year old vampires that look like they're twelve. Right. right. So let's just go ahead and just toss those out too. No more <laughs> don't don't be digging through the anime to find these characters. None of those. So yeah, that has to pass the Harkness test. But yeah, we will we will not only do Pokemon, but anything else in that Discord server for our twenty four hour stream. We'll we'll sit there and do some Smasher Pass. I'll do yeah, I'll and, do Smasher Pass for five hours if you guys are donating. I don't fuck. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it forever. Just keep donating. <laughs> maybe maybe a few of them will even make it to our TikToks or something like that. That's right. I'll do a whole two hours of just streaming me making TikToks. I don't care. <laughs> Tell us what you want. Which, hey, if you donate, that like, you can basically tell us to do whatever you want during that twenty four hours. We'll 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 sell out uh, for yeah. for charity. We might have we we might have to move it over to Chatterbait, but yeah, fuck it, <laughs> I don't care. Do it. <laughs> All right, um, I think that's everything, at least for now. We we talked about some stuff that we missed during previous episodes. We talked about the past of season three. We've talked about some of the upcoming stuff. So you ready to throw a ball on this one? No, no, I'm not, <laughs> but I can try. I mean, honestly, it just feels like this whole episode was us throwing a bo- throwing a bow on this episode. That's uh, true. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to go through and recap all the things that we recapped. I'm not going to go through and tell you to look forward to what you already were told to look forward to. Just know that we've been having a really good time. Um, we we both have talked about this and we both have been really enjoying ourselves with this and what attention we get from you guys is just ch- cherry on top it's you the support that we've gotten from you guys has been amazing really enjoy seeing how you know our episodes are being listened to and you don't have to say anything we can see you watching our video or our watching our videos listening to our podcast it's it's great. It makes us feel like we're doing something and it's being appreciated or hated. We don't know. You're watching it though. <laughs> so thank you. That's my bow. 
All right. I, being the episode this is, I'm going to hit this extra hard. I'm going to hit our outro extra hard. Please email us at castersguild at gmail.com. Um, it's, it's been a very underutilized tool for those of you who listen to this podcast. You can communicate directly with us. And there is about a 90% chance that if you want us to, we'll be reading that email right here on the cast. So please email us at castersguild.com. Come join our Discord. It is probably the best way to interact with us um, and shape the way that the podcast is going. If you come on the Discord and say, hey, I want to hear an episode about this, chances are we're going to do an episode about that. Especially if you say, hey, I'd love to be on an episode about this. Chances are you'll be on an episode about that. We're always looking we're, for new episodes. Let me interject. New guests. We're not looking for experts. We're not looking for, you know, we're not looking for actual friggin' critics. We, we are looking for fans. We are looking for real people. We just want you to be able to talk about it for an hour and a half. And that doesn't mean you need to fill an hour and a half. We're going to be talking too. So we just want you to be able to, like, if you could feel like you could talk about something for a half an hour, let's do it. Um, yeah, if you th- if you think you could talk about something for a half an hour, we can make it too. <laughs> so yeah, email us, check out our Discord, find us on all the socials, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye everybody. Bye 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 bye.